So hello everyone. <coughs> I'm back. Theodore is back. Yeah. So today we wanna continue our discussion about some of the energy aspects of fluids. So we have discussed why we are already interested in this. So the question is how how are we supposed to analyze the energy of a fluid? Well, first thing first, basic law of basic law is we all need to know. I'm going to write conservation of energy. So as as with any um, system, you probably need to look at um, energy being transformed from one kind to another. That's uh, something you should be already familiar with. So it, to start off, we want to consider, let's say, a ball rolling on a hill, because that's uh, that's a very simple simple example, easy to relate to. So let's draw a hill. Okay. So that's a hill there, drawn in MS Paint. So there is a very crudely drawn ball, a sphere. Let's put it orange. Yep. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of annoying orange, but anyway, let's have this ball rolling from here let's call this point A and this let's say maybe it goes up a little more and then I will call this point point B alright let's copy paste this over we can actually we don't need this anymore. We can just shift it to the side. I'm gonna shift this to the side. And yeah. So we have this very simple picture. And <coughs> what is the energy of this ball at point A. Well, at point A, we'll have some uh, gravitational potential energy. So energy at point A equals to gravitational potential energy. And how do we write gravitational potential energy? It's usually just a simple formula. E GP equals to MGH. Or some people will write mg z as well so that is and we assume of course that the ball is at rest so there's no kinetic energy if there will we will just uh, add it to the energy of the ball so now um, of course z you need to measure it from some reference point so let's say we have this this line here And then we'll have an arrow, and we'll call this uh, Z A, Z underscore A, or Z subscript A. And then this point, at point B, anyways, we'll call it Z B. Oh, no matter how the ball rolls up and down, it will still be coming to this height of ZB. So the net gravitational potential energy change is, of course, measured by the change in height. So let's write uh, an expression for the energy of the ball at point A. Energy at A equals to MGZA. Okay, and what is the energy at B? Energy at B. So, um, some of this gravitational potential energy will be transformed into uh, other forms, for example, kinetic energy. So, let's write half m v square 
at point B. So that's the kinetic energy. And of course, you have some gravitational potential energy as well. And of course, the, the ball will have some sort of, uh, will have encountered some sort of friction or air resistance or combination of both on the way down. So for now, simplic for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call this um, plus F. Or rather, if you were if you were to find the difference between these energies, E A equals to E B plus F, where F is some uh, uh, term will include to uh, represent the loss due to frictional or dissipative forces. Okay, so we substitute in the terms. G Z A equals to half M V square at B plus M G Z B and then plus F. Okay. So now we have a very very simple uh, way of describing the energy of one ball. Now let's Let's extend this case, all right? Because this this isn't exactly like a fluid yet. So we have the case. Let's divide our ball in two, so to speak. So to get rid of the ball, I'm just going to paint it white, so that it gets rid of the ball. So let's have two smaller orange colored balls. The fill should be solid color. Yeah. So let's have two balls, two orange colored balls, and I'm just going to shift them over here. Ooh. So your second color should be white. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Yeah, that will do. So now we have two balls, okay, just just pretend that the balls are touching, they're both at point A, just pretend with me uh, for a moment, because I don't want to uh, draw it so nicely. Pretend they're at point A. So how how is the energy going to be like? Now, you, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, you'll you'll see uh, in a little bit uh, why it, why I'm doing this. Is uh, well, okay. Short answer is this: if you think about fluid uh, and you think about the molecules it's made up of, you can think of these molecules as being very, 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 very small balls. So if you keep doing this process of division over and over and over again you eventually end up with uh, atomic sized balls and that can actually represent a fluid flowing uphill and downhill the only exception is of course instead of uh, having it free freely flowing you might have to build a pipe along this hill so anyway let's consider that all right so let's say we have these two balls equally messed M1, let's call that ball 1 and ball 2. Okay, so all we have to do to change the energy term at this point is just M1 plus M2, GZA. M1 plus M2. And M1 plus M2. So, so this frictional force will be the force experienced by these two balls, right? So they will lose some kinetic energy bouncing into each other and bouncing against the, the ground at least. So F equals, F equals uh, friction loss by balls bouncing against each other plus uh, rubbing against rubbing 
against the floor. Okay, it's just quite floor. Okay, it's a very um, crude way of seeing things, but hope you get the point. Now, let's keep repeating this. Let's chop up these balls into really, really, really small atomic size, maybe. So, if you're going to do this, I'm going to replace. Okay. Paint. I'm going to replace it with, let's say, an airbrush. If I can still find an airbrush. Yeah. Airbrush. So... Let's say you have many, 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 many small balls. Okay. So if you, you can't get the process, all we have to do to analyze the energy. Okay. All you have to do to analyze the energy is simply sum all the mass of the small balls. GZ A equals half sum mass of the small balls gz b plus half sum b b square then of course you have another friction term so there's again uh, a loss by balls bouncing against each other and rubbing against the floor so to speak so these are the two things we need to take note of and sometimes in fluid mechanics if this was really a fluid I in any case this is called the dissipation term the second is just like a you know uh, I think a shear term I think but I'm not that, uh, it's not that important, uh, I mean, for basic introduction. Because sometimes the dissipation term, I mean, this F, not, not just of the balls rubbing against each other, they are sort of combined into some, com some form of uh, friction loss. So this whole thing is, <coughs> well, I think... You can call it an overall dissipation term or something. Uh, but the idea, uh, whatever you call it, it is the total frictional loss uh, experienced by this uh, mass of balls of fluid in this sense, going from point A to point B. Alright. So if you are to write a general formula, I'm going to replace this sum of mass by just M, where M is the mass of the fluid, okay it just that becomes the total mass of the fluid anyway so it's kind of uh, not so useful to think of uh, you know them as individual masses but that's exactly what you are doing all right let's put a more general case Is there a, more a, a more general case um, I don't know honestly I don't know what Half mv a square plus mgz a plus half mg. Oopsie, I think I made a mistake here. Okay, so we have a general case. If uh, the ball or the fluid has kinetic energy at point A, you have to include it in this term here. 
the uh, gravitational potential energy at point A. You have source also account for that. And uh, you do this pretty much the same for point B, and then you have to include some frictional loss as well. Okay, so that's generally the energy balance. But uh, in a the fluid, there's also the other thing that uh, we have that we don't have for, let's say, a single ball case. Okay, but the analogy is as follows. Let's say these balls are kind of uh, squishy or they have uh, the exit force on each other. So if you squeeze them together hard enough, they kind of store some kind of elastic potential energy. And if you extend this to the case of many, many, many small balls, this elastic potential energy, when you push it, it can be sort of representative of the pressure that the fluid is exerting on its surroundings. Just as in the same way like uh, how you pre compress a string, a spring, and then it, it exerts a force back on you. Same way, you, you push against the fluid, you, you pressurize it, and you push back against you. So, there is some, some term that has to account for this. Some, some, some sort of uh, pressure energy. Okay. So, what we usually do, we use this term called the pressure times the volume. That will give you the total amount of energy in joules. Okay. That will give you the total amount of energy in joules. Uh, that this uh, that the so-called uh, uh, elastic potential energy, so to speak, it's not exactly correct, but yeah, it's about there. Uh, that this fluid uh, is storing. It's called PV energy. Okay. So this is how our energy equation would look like. And if you want to put volume in terms of, let's say, a mass, for example. So I'm just going to write um, mass is rho times v alright so if we just uh, change this around we can have m divided by rho where rho being rho is the density and this is uh, done at point A so again volume I'm just changing the volume terms here is the easiest. That's a good thing about Microsoft Word. Okay, there you go. So this is um, this is how our energy equation might look like in terms of masses. And if you were to bring the mass out and you'll make it look a little neater, that's what it'll look like. And that's of, of course assuming you have a constant mass flowing between A and B. But as for simple cases now, we will kind of uh, leave that aside. Leave other complicated cases aside. And let's say now you want to um, have a per unit mass basis. So what you usually see on a per unit mass basis Let's just divide throughout by M. And then we'll divide our F per unit mass. And that's what our energy equation would generally look like for a uh, fluid. And
So, um, we'll want to explore some of the other, you know, simple applications of this uh, so-called generalized uh, energy equation for our energy analysis. So you may have heard of something like uh, what is called Bernoulli's equation. And then you're like, oh, let's see. Bernoulli equation. So you have Bernoulli's equation, and then it looks something like this. You see? It looks something like this. Okay. And yeah, I'm wondering, oh, how, how do we get from here? How do we get from here to here? Because it almost looks, it looks very, very similar. You see? The forms that we had are being taken, they look like the terms here already. And then, how how can we like you know consider them to be uh, similar? So we'll discuss that in the next videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you join me in the next video. See you next time.